And I think that's what I want. And I do. There are things that happen, little things that really excite me that probably shouldn't. Uh, for example, for this to function, you just need to understand, if you eat a packed lunch near me, I am watching you. <laughs> I am watching you like a hawk. Right? And not because I don't like you. Anyone who makes a packed lunch is a good human being. You will be amongst the last to die when I take over. <laughs> the, the humans that make packed lunches are incredible. Because you wake up like the rest of us, you're hungover, you're tired, you feel sick. We hit snooze, you go and make sandwiches. <laughs> First thing in the morning when the last thing you want to think about is ham and egg <laughs> and corned beef. But you go and you go, oh, it'd be worth it at lunchtime. And you cut them into a little shape so they fit neatly into your little box and then you build everything else around it so your apple doesn't bang into your banana. And then you put a little chocolate biscuit in there, don't you, right at the end? But you pretend all morning that you haven't, so it's a surprise when you find it. <laughs> Remarkable people. Yeah, I'm gonna have my lunch. I've forgotten my chocolate biscuit again. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh. There's a mint club in there. Oh, I forgot I'd put it in there. Keith, you legend. You're remarkable people, right? So if I watch someone eat a pat lunch, it's like watching a child unwrap a stocking. Just total joy. It doesn't matter who you are. It could be Obama having his pat lunch. You look like a five-year-old. Just, I hope I've got a yogurt. <laughs> so I was on a train uh, going into London. Uh, I'm stood in the sort of cubicle bit, and I watch a guy opposite me unload a pat lunch onto his lap. And I'm like, here we fucking go. <laughs> this is already the best thing that's going to happen to me today. <laughs> you better finish this before my stop, because otherwise I'm not getting off. <laughs> This is the reality we're confronting. I look around and no one else has clocked this. I'm like, well, this is my little private show then. It's like a lap dance now. It's just me and him and his lunch. I'm like, oh, yeah, do it, baby. He lifts his lid off like that. First thing he gets out is a baguette, right? Smoked salmon and cream cheese. It wouldn't have been my choice, but I let him carry on. He puts the box to the side. I already like him when he's made his packed lunch. Bear this in mind. I fall a little bit in love with him when he unwraps it and I can see that that cling film has been cut with scissors. <laughs> this is a professional we're dealing with here. It's not all stretched and torn like, oh, you bastard, it's snibbity, snibbity, snibbity. <laughs> baldy, baldy, see you at lunchtime. <laughs> oh, right, he's going to know how to eat this baguette, and he really did. He nailed it. He ate the end bits first. Obviously too crusty, aren't they? You're not going to end on that. He works his way into the middle, the perfect middle inch. That's where he worked out from when he was creating this masterpiece. That's what he wants at the end. And he didn't eat one end and then the other. Constant pivot. <laughs> Got to that little middle inch, popped it in his mouth. Oh, that is perfect. This is a pro. Still no one's watching. I'm like, you dicks. <laughs> he then, he reaches and he grabs an apple. And I'm a bit disappointed, because when you watch the best, you want to see them take on something. I want to see him eat like a meringue or something. <laughs> How are you going to do this, chief? Like an apple, you just say, oh, get on with it, dickhead. Just grabbed it like that, so the stalk's coming out of the top. He picks the stalk off, throws it in his lunchbox, and then he does this. Ow! <laughs> Big old bite out of the very top of the apple. And I audibly yelped at that point. <laughs> You can't eat the lid of an apple. <laughs> we all know, an apple has a lid and a base. You clutch that, you consume around the apple. These are facts. You can't eat the lid, this tip, right? I know what's happened, he's holding it, he's thinking, I really want my apple, but I'm not holding it, right? Like, ah, ah. Oh, fucking ruined it now, and I? I'm gonna get a sticky finger when I try and hold this properly now. Well, at least I hope no one noticed. And I just wanna look at him and go, yeah, I saw you. You let me down, big guy, right? And I'm waiting for him to... He doesn't lock up at all. He just goes like this. Ow! Another bite. And then I think, hang on, that wasn't a mistake. This is how he eats a fucking apple. <laughs> From top to bottom. <laughs> now my mind is melting instantly. You can't tell me there's new ways of eating fruit. <laughs> now if someone gets on a train with a banana, I'm like, well, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> They'd probably just shove it in his earlobe or something. <laughs> just sit on a melon and ingest it somehow. <laughs> I'm watching him, and you, you see him eat the lid, you think, well, he's going to eat the core, isn't he? Now, am I supposed to interject here, because he's going to turn into a treat? <laughs> I don't want to watch a man die while he's having his lunch. <laughs> you can't jump in, can you? Go, no! <laughs> Idiot. Did you not see the tree in carriage B? Honestly. <laughs> so there is a warning to all of us, that is. He eats right through the core. Now, I'm not showing off. 
I have seen someone eat the core of an apple before. <laughs> I've travelled. Uh, there was a friend of mine at primary school. Uh, it was a cry for help. He used to eat other people's. You'd eat your apple, you'd give him it. He'd go, <clears throat> <clears throat> He's a tree now. <laughs> Richmond Park, he's doing all right for himself. Uh, he eats right through the core of this apple, and I think, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I have never seen anyone in my life eat the little anus bit <laughs> at the bottom of it. You know the little wizened tarantula's ring piece? <laughs> right, they're, they're even on your own apple, you don't look at it, do you? It's disgusting. Like, oh, lovely apple. Like, Ugh. <laughs> Why did I look at that? I can't eat that now. It looks so much like an anus, if you squeezed an apple and shit came out, you wouldn't even be surprised, would you? <laughs> You just think, well, what did I think was going to happen when I squeezed the apple? Of course it's going to have a shit out of its anus. I'm rude to watch. <laughs> he gets down to the anus, and it's really like, you know, sometimes you hear a skid, and you think, oh, I'm going to see a car crash. And then you think, oh, I don't want to see a car crash. And then you think, oh, I don't want to miss a car crash. <laughs> it's that. I don't want to watch him eat this anus, because he's going to put it in his mouth. I'll feel it on my tongue, all dry, and uh, get it off my anus. <laughs> But I can't look away, can I? Because you can't ask anyone else. Excuse me, did you see if that man ate his anus? <laughs> I'm just going to pull this red handle here. And then we're going to find out who should be with you. All right. I have to, and he gets right down to the anus, right? And he's got the whole anus in his hand, like the song. He sort of moves to a pinch. He's really got hold of this thing now. And I'm sickened by him now. It's MasterChef all over again. I fucking hate you. I'm going to grab that escape hammer. You're not getting off this train now. I can't let you breed. I need mean, the anus, sure, but don't end with it. It's as if he's saying, yeah, I don't mind the flesh, but I just get that so I can have the anus at the end. And he nibbles all round so there's no flesh left on it. It's just the anus. And I'm physically trying to hold down sick now. <laughs> Puts it in that hand. He retrieves the cling film from his sandwich, unfolds it, pops the anus in the middle, folds it twice more, and I would say my heart ejaculated over everyone in the house. <laughs> 